You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Queen Gaming. If some of you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Drag, today I'm coming back at you to the Let's Play episode of Liar. So y'all, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right back into it. I've been informed that this might be a somewhat long episode, so we'll see. Uh, I, I am going to be watching a movie with my partner and my dad soon, so we'll, we'll, we'll see. I might have to fight Alarm Channel a little bit. A little bit on this video, but anyway, I'll just go ahead and jump right back in. All right, let's do it. Okay. No, listen to me. You're gonna do everything in your power to prove my innocence, and I'll do the same. Let me, uh, I don't think I like that voice volume. Okay, that's not bad. And if it's all for naught and I'm thrown in a cell, we'll continue to fight the odds. But if the worst happens, you're do but if the worst happens, you're to do nothing. I can't stand the thought of roping you into into a punishment you don't deserve. You don't deserve it either. I can feel my eyes beginning to water. That's not the point. I say this in a hushed whisper. Testifying for me is already putting you in a dangerous spot. I don't want you dying on my behalf. Tears begin to form in the corners of his eyes as he looks down at the ground. His breathing is heavy and his tail is tucked between his legs. Let's contemplate the horrible scenario where I'm sentenced to death. You are going to do nothing to stop it from happening. My eyes are welling with tears and my heart is racing. I can feel a headache coming on. Afterwards, you will mourn and weep as you, as I know you will because you are good and kind. And when the mourning is done, you will move on. And find someone else who will love you and treasure you as I do. And I know you'll try to, and I know you'll try to, I know you'll try and try to make things work because that's what you've done since the moment I've met you. You asked me to be reasonable, but it won't make things, won't make things better. I'll be loyal to you until the day I die. Would that be the same loyalty as what you've shown this kingdom? Your loyalty to Liar has tied you down and made you its prisoner. You're a knight, a servant. I will not have you make the same pledge to me. His breathing relaxes and I can tell he's thinking of a way to reply. The bells also begin to ring again. I made that pledge when King Raynor asked it of me. I made that promise. He hangs his head low, his muzzle almost buried in the fluff of his neck. Lyle, I love you. For most of my life, I've never, ever known for sure what love was, but now that it has been ripped into my soul, I can feel it. And I know that you love me too, and you've told me before, as you've told me before, I've made a great impact on your life, but... If the worst should happen, don't let your loyalty to me chain you down as well. Don't. Because if you're loyal to me, you'll only be joining me in my grave. Please don't. But if you love me, you'll let me go. I... I... Leuven... Even if it means tarnishing my own name more than I already have, I will stop at nothing to prove your innocence. I can see the pain in his eyes, and I know this is a hard topic for him. But it needed to be brought up. I know you will. It's in your nature. He takes his arm He takes his arm to his face and wipes the tears from his eyes. And after he does that, he bends down and wipes the tears from my eyes with his paws. The rough pads gently brush against my eyelids, and I cradle my face in his paw. It's warmth comforting. We stand there for a few minutes, the air heavy with the weight of all that's happened. One of the castle guards approaches us, their green cloaks swishing with their tail. The other guard walks through the door to the other side. A commotion can be heard as he slips through. Zuri! Lao takes me from his embrace and turns to them. Yes? They're ready to, for the accused to be brought out soon. He glances at me with his cat-like eyes. Lately, everyone either avoids looking at me or can't take their eyes off me. He turns to me, a confident look ca cow covering his obvious worry. Are you ready? Does it matter? He lets out a sigh. I guess not. Lyle takes my hand as we walk to the door at the end of the hall. When the door opens, walk through, and you should find your place before the throne. We make it to the door and stand in front of it. Lyle leans against the wall, the wall, resting the side of his head up against one of the bricks. I stand across from the door, staring through the crack in the, crack in the door. I can hear the faintest noise of chatter coming from the other side. My skin is crawling and it begins to itch. I start to feel hot, and the taste of my own spit begins to become more noticeable. Reaching, reaching behind my head, the chains ringing together and resting on my chest, I pull my hair out of my face. Lao continues to rest against the wall, silent and calm. One second, y'all. It is drink time. He's most likely thinking, so I just thinking, so I decide to leave him to it, as I don't want to disturb his thoughts at, at a time like this. I should be concentrating as well. I close my eyes and try once again to trigger a vision of that night. Nothing happens. 
I opened the game and my body shivered slightly. For some reason, I felt as if several people were all watching me. There was something else, though. A comforting hand on my shoulder? The feeling goes away, and I wonder if I'd imagined it. But the way things have been going lately, I doubt it. I brush it off and instead, and instead try to have a different vision. Something easier, just to make sure I didn't lose the ability altogether. That familiar experience of losing all my feeling around me only for it to come back overtakes me once again. My feet feel as if they hit the ground very hard, sending a shock through my body. The ground, however, is soft. Oh! Whoever this is, they're looking down at the ground, leaning against something hard. It's most likely a tree. I can see the spots of light being cast between the leaves and onto the ground beneath their feet. Those are Lyle's feet! I know for sure that they're his. Their fur is the same color and everything. As I realize this, I start to notice everything else. The fluff around his neck and the, sway and the, ta and the swaying tail above his lower back. Only a few seconds into the vision, I hear a soft voice from behind me. You'd really do it? Oh. What voice was I doing for Adrius? You'll really do it? Of course. You promise? Leuven! Lau's slightly shaking me by the shoulders as I come out of the vision. He has his helmet on, his ears standing tall. Come on, we have to go. I look ahead and see that the door has been opened, the castle guard standing on the other side. He takes my hand and leads me through the door, the light from the throne room blinding at first. We exit the doorway and find ourselves in the back of the hall near the windows. I'm overwhelmed by the, by the amount of people in the, hall, in the hall. They're all backed up against the large windows and pillars, standing in section crowds. I've never really actually seen this many people in the throne room before. They all chat amongst themselves, their voices bouncing off the walls, forming a cacophony of nonsense. Just as I was starting to get used to the noise and presence of everyone in the room, they very suddenly quiet down. Just like that, everyone's eyes are on me. It's a horrible feeling. I'm reminded of that night once again, every person in the ballroom standing around and staring at Lyle and I. It's happening again. I even start to feel the anger that took over during that, over during that awful moment, but I try to suppress it. Lyle lets go of my hand and instead holds on to the chains of the shackles, gently leading me to the center of the throne room. I try to stare at the ground as we pass everyone, head down, in order to avoid drawing any more attention. I can't help but peek around at the corner, out of the corners of my eyes. The left side of the throne room is, is lined with some chairs. There are nine chairs in total and seven people seated in each. I recognize a few of them from the solstice. Tall owls, tall, two owls tall and gray, their faces judgmental and stern. The male owl is clad in crimson fabrics and the female one wears a teal dress. I also recognize the vixen sitting next to them. Her seafoam green dress embroidered with flowers and vines. Her smile from that night is gone, replaced with a neutral expression. There are some new faces, though. At least people I've never noticed before. Oh, Jesus. The one out of them all that catches my eye is a large bear. He looks to be almost as big as Bjorn. So big that his chair has considerable space between the chairs on either side of him to give the people sitting in those chairs room to sit. Not only is he as big as Bjorn, but he looks like him, too. Aside from the fact that his fur is black... On his left sits an elk. His antlers branch out, taking a wide, a wide amount of space above his head. From the prongs of his antlers hang, are, hang four metallic leaves, each one a different color. He looks to be very aged, but sits back, calm, but sits calm and steady, like an old tree. Next to him is what looks like a stoat. His clothes are flashy and green, honeyed golden ribbons draping down the sleeves and lining his vest. I recognize the, the, I recognize the crest on his cape, the four-leaf clover being pierced by an arrow. Second, y'all. It is... Drink time. I saw banners flying on the walls of Braden's Vale when I passed through there on my way to Lyre. They have a good relation to Aaron, if memory, if, mem if my memory serves me right. Finally, at the very end of the row of chairs, closest to the throne, I see Liz. She sits in the chair, her hands placed in her lap with one leg crossed over the other. Unlike everyone else, she's the only one not looking at me. She seems to actually be avoiding eye contact altogether. That is, until she looks up she looks she looks up and her eyes meet mine. I can't exactly understand the expression on her face and what it means, but she's clearly a bit uncomfortable. Maybe it's my appearance, or it's the fact that the day is finally here. Either way, I doubt she's here because she wants to be. Next to those chairs is a small table. I can't tell from here, but it looks like there's some evidence on it. On the other side of the room there's another cluster of chairs and a few people are sitting in them. Kadaj is among them, his green clothing shining vibrantly in the, not, in the light, making him stand out like a sore thumb. It helps because I had almost forgotten what he looked like. The cat looks at me with a curious and almost concerned expression. 
Staggering the steps leading up to the throne are several royal guards. Finn is among them, his helmet on and facing forward, posture straight and shoulders back. There's two empty spots among the guards, which I assume are for Bjorn and Lyle. Lyle continues to lead me to the bottom of the steps, making sure not to tug on the shackles. I'm also, hel I'm also helping by keeping up with him. It's dead quiet in the throne room now, aside from our footsteps. I expected to hear people whispering in the crowd, but nobody's uttering a word. I look up at the throne, the large wooden mass basking in the light from the windows. On the left of the throne, I stands Leif. I haven't seen him in a long time, but he looks the same as he did the last time I saw him. After Lyle and I come to a stop at the bottom of the steps, Leif notices me looking at him. He looks away, but it doesn't matter as my eyes are drawn to the true centerpiece of the room. There he sits, the crowned king of Lyre. The throne looks small compared to him as he sits perfectly straight in the seat, arms resting at either side. Adrius doesn't take his amber eyes off me, if he, off me for a moment as he leans forward in his throne, looking down on me with displeasure. It's almost like he's looking right through through into my very soul. On his right, on his right stands a figure wearing a green cloak. The robe is priestly and their arms are brought together within their sleeves. I've never actually seen them before. I take a few steps down the stairs and stand behind the guards, before raising their paws into the air. All-powerful Tigran, we pray that you guide the members of this trial towards the truth. Can't say for certain, but I'm pretty sure I see Adrius, Adrius roll his eyes. Guide our king towards true justice, and may his judgment be swift and true. For he who sits the throne of liars shall be righteous and protect all from the wicked. Even given my situation, I can't help but laugh at the idea that Tigran might not even be able to hear this person. Adrius sits up and I feel his gaze pierce through me once more. Lord Leuven of Arryn. Lyle stands, beside, stands by my side, looking forward, his paw grasping the chains to my shackles lightly. Yes? The word comes out a bit raspy, so I clear my throat. He rubs his hand on the, on the arm of his seat before continuing. You have been accused of murdering King Raynor Ossian on the night of the winter solstice. Do you deny it? Yes. Very well. We shall proceed, then. As king, I will be judging this trial. The rules are very simple. He leans back in his seat, relaxing his voice. You will speak only when spoken to, or when you have been permitted to speak without permission. Do you understand this? Of course. Good. Along with my judgment, there is a jury of lords and ladies from all across Lyre's territory. The hooded figure gestures to the nobility sitting off to my left. Lord Oscar Grimdell, Lord of Grimrock. God. What is it with fantasy games and the name Grimrock? Anyway, one second, y'all. Drink time. Alright, so. Looks like we may not be getting to that part if that person in the comments mentioned, so this video will probably be normal length. Fingers crossed. The large bear stands from his seat, bowing to Adrius. The chainmail on his body clinks together with every movement he makes. Lord Oliver Oswell, Lord of North Osrin. The first owl stands, bowing to Adrius. As he bows, he extends his wings behind his body, fluttering the cape draped over his shoulders. Along with his sister, Lady Olivia Oswell, Lady of South Osrin. The second one stands with him, performing a curtsy before they both take their seats in unison. Lord John Galen, Lord of Galemore and Protector of the Galemorian Woods. The elk stands from his seat, propping himself up on a cane, nodding to Adrius with a stern look. The leaves on his antlers shake as he does this. Lady Tyrol Rihanna, Lady of Aenor. The vixen stands from her seat and curtsies, though it's not as elegant as she looks. She sits back down just as the elk steadily manages to place himself back into his own seat. Lord William Braden of Braden's Vale. The small stoat stands from his seat, proudly bowing before jumping bowing before jumping back into his chair. The furniture scuffs against the floor as he does this. Lastly, War Minister Elizabeth Reen of, Oz of Rosewind. Liz leaves her seat and climbs the steps, taking her place on the right of Adrius' throne. As the current king's advisor, she will formally be at his side during this trial. She gives a slight bow in his direction before turning to face the front. The hooded figure takes his time walking back down the steps as he takes a seat a few chairs down from Kadaj. Thank you for the introductions. The trial will now begin. On cue, all the royal guards stamp their feet, including Lyle. Sir Lyle Reed. Lyle steps forward and gets on one knee, lowering his head. His tail is tucked between his legs, almost completely limp. My king. 
You may remove your helmet. Lau stands back up and slides the helmet from his head. I can hear a few people make noises of discomfort in the crowds off to the side. Adrian's expression doesn't seem to budge. Do you swear to tell the truth, not only as a citizen of Lyre, but as the captain of the Royal Guard? I do. Very well. As the individual who made the arrest of Lord Leuven, you may describe your account of the evening and what happened to the best of your ability. As you wish. Lyle moves to the center, standing in front of me. He beckons to the people sitting off to the sides. Most of you know that I was assigned to Lord Leuven on his arrival in the Kingdom of Lyre as his personal guard. This was a decision made by King Raynor himself. In the time that I've spent with Lord Leuven, they have shown no intentions of committing treason or murder. They simply did what they were requested to do by the King as the newly appointed financial advisor. Suddenly, the bear on my left speaks up. You... Were you given any other specific duties when guarding this lord? He speaks in a very gruff voice, almost interrupting Lyle. Nothing other than protecting them and guarding the room at night, along with guiding them around the castle. They're foreign, so King Raynor wished for me to help them understand this place. As I was saying... Similar to their overall time spent here, nothing out of the ordinary had happened for most of the night leading up to the murder. Leuven and I attended the ball, and I decided to leave early. If my memory serves, very, serves correctly, Lord Leuven left the party before you, after your dance. A few of the nobles look at Oliver as he says this. His sister stands up next to him, adding on to the statement. He left the ballroom alone, slandering us on his way out after that shameful display. Alright. All right, I'm going to pause it right there. So it seems that the next episode is going to be the one that you can't miss where everyone gives their account of that evening. And maybe we will finally, finally fucking learn who killed Lord, who killed King Raynor. I have some theories of my own based on the still image that we got of that person holding the knife in the, in the window. I have some theories about that. I'm going to keep them to myself. And if any of them come true, I'll tell you all which one. Anyway, y'all, thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or a tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.